Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker is now just 18 days away from its official release by Disney, Lucasfilm, J.J. Abrams, and even creator George Lucas. That is all set and ready to end the Skywalker saga and the sequel trilogy itself. This is Mike Zero. Make sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel for future Star Wars content. Now, one aspect of Episode 9 that a lot of fans are very worried and excited about is exactly how Disney and Lucasfilm are going to utilize the entire film and how it really ties directly into the prequels and the originals and how it's going to also borrow elements from Star Wars Legends, also known as the Expanded Universe, that was created sometime after the events of Return of the Jedi. Now, on top of all of this, we do know that this movie is going to be making many different risks and will have many different twists and turns that will lead to saga-wide implications that are going to change how we view the past eight Star Wars movies that come before this one. And with that being said, we also know that J.J. Abrams wants to make this by far the darkest Star Wars film there is out of the entire Skywalker saga. Now, what's really intriguing about all of this has all to do with the third act of Episode 9, specifically in the ending of this movie, and a particular twist that is connected to Supreme Leader Snoke and Palpatine. Now, specifically, it's explained that one of the sequences based in the third act of the film is said to involve both Rey, Ben Solo, and Palpatine inside of his throne room on the world of Exegol, where it's said that Sidious begins to explain some revelations and his plan to rule the galaxy forever. It's said that one of the sequences is said to involve a moment in which Palpatine unveils to Kylo Ren while Kylo is put into a force freeze state that he was developing clones of Snoke to create a new army for his new Sith Empire where it's explained that Palpatine was able to also control the original Snoke as a distraction and to also test Snoke's abilities as a powerful dark side user and is said to explain as to why Snoke was not a, a Sith. It's explained that the original Snoke's consciousness was actually inserted into the cloned version of Snoke that was utilized to rule the First Order from the very start and that Palpatine had a great interest in Snoke's power from the Unknown Regions. Sidious explains it's one of the main reasons as to why he sent his forces out to the Unknown Regions was the search for the Dark Side humanoid that went by the name of Evandor, and that Palpatine is the one who named the clone of Evandor as Snoke. The name Snoke is said to have a hidden meaning to Palpatine and stands for something in secret that is said to be revealed in the upcoming The Rise of Skywalker novelization in March of 2020. The Snoke in The Last Jedi and The Force Awakens is a clone of Evandor, however maintains the consciousness of Evandor and that somehow Palpatine was able to find Snoke at one of the Dark Temples on Exegol, where the original Snoke was killed. It's said that Snoke used to live on the world of Exegol and that once Palpatine arrived, he defeated Snoke and extracted his DNA with his relics to create dozens of clones of Snoke that would take years to grow. The first clone of Snoke was said to decay rapidly and is said to explain why Snoke has the wounds and the injuries that he does in The Last Jedi and that Palpatine wanted to create a Snoke clone faster than usual and with that came the deformities. In the initial cut of the movie, J.J. wanted to explain that Snoke had battle scars, however these scars and deformities are from the process of speeding up the clone phase that took place shortly after the Battle of Endor, when Palpatine arrived on Exegol. This is said to be explained toward the end of the movie within the third act. So let's go over a couple of parts about this. Now, obviously, we do know that J.J. Abrams wants to create revelations just like this that's going to make us look back at The Last Jedi and The Force Awakens in a completely different way. Now, the thing that really gets me is the fact that Palpatine was able to control Supreme Leader Snoke at his own will, on and off, during the events of The Last Jedi, The Force Awakens, and everything that comes before that, and also explains as to why Snoke sounds like Palpatine in The Last Jedi, hence him saying, Young Rey, and fulfill your destiny to Kylo Ren. So all those different lines of dialogue and how it really did mirror that of Palpatine's dialogue makes a lot of sense now. So with that being said, how he used the Snoke clone as a puppet, it's actually said that it was based off of the original Snoke, where his consciousness was transferred into the clone body of Snoke. The original one was actually called Avandor, a being over in the unknown regions that lived on the world of Exegol. 
Now, in case you guys did not know, we went over Palpatine's survival a couple of weeks ago, explaining all of that, of how when Palpatine first arrived on the world of Exegol, he sensed a dark and sinister presence. Now it makes sense as to exactly what that dark presence really was. It was the original body of Snoke before he was actually killed, who was said to be the last remaining Midwu, which, by the way, is said to be the species of the Snoke actual, you know, species that are going to be demonstrated in The Rise of Skywalker. Now, toward the ending of the movie, this is all explained from Palpatine to Kylo Ren to kind of just realize and make Kylo Ren realize about how much Palpatine has really been in control over the universe and the turn of events between Rey and Kylo Ren. Now, honestly, I think that this is a better explanation as to why, you know, Palpatine was able to do the things that he was able to do over in the Unknown Regions. He used the First Order as a distraction and used Supreme Leader Snoke to mask himself as the new threat of the entire galaxy. Even Luke Skywalker fell, you know, for this terrible, you know, act by Palpatine and was able to use Snoke as a remote, if you will, in order to turn Kylo Ren to the dark side of the forest while Palpatine was over in the Unknown Regions, building his new Sith Empire. Now, what I like about this too, is that this is also going to explain exactly where things could go in the future, right? The fact that he built all of these different, you know, um, bases on Exegol, one of which is said to contain the Snoke clones, how he wanted to use the Snoke clones as warriors, a part of his new Sith Empire. This was all a part of Palpatine's plan right from the get-go, once he arrived on the world of Exegol, just after the events of Return of the Jedi, when he survived the fall of the second Death Star. Now, this of course is JJ's way of kind of, I guess you could say, explaining as to why Snoke was killed so fast in The Last Jedi, and why Snoke wasn't considered a Sith in, of course, episodes 7 and 8, is because he was actually being controlled by Palpatine. He was basically just a utility for Palpatine, and could also explain as to why Kylo Ren is not a Sith, because Kylo Ren went under the training of Snoke who was basically not a Sith, but who was being controlled by Palpatine. Which honestly, kind of makes sense and doesn't make sense at the same time. You would think that if Palpatine is training, or should I say, controlling Snoke to train Kylo Ren, you'd think he would train him through the ways of the Sith, but maybe he wants to do that in person once Kylo Ren arrives on the world of Exegol, face to face, in the very beginning of this movie. So, let's get into another segment here that I think really stands out is the fact that this also connects the beginning of the movie where Kylo Ren arrives on Exegol and realizes that there is an army being built by Palpatine and that this is all said to be used on basically, you know, originating from the original version of Snoke, who was actually called a Vandor. Now, we went over how, before in the past, Snoke had many different identities and how Snoke was around 800-something years old. It still makes sense because the original version of Snoke most likely is what the cast and crew were referring to, such as Andy Serkis saying that Snoke was stronger than Palpatine, which I never really bought that. I don't know why Andy Serkis would say that, but apparently that was the case, that Snoke was stronger than Palpatine. Maybe Palpatine in his current state, that's a possibility, but I don't think that he was more powerful than Palpatine in his prime. Now, the whole entire thing about Snoke and how his explanation uh, is going to be done in the third act of Episode 9, specifically in the ending of this movie, this really is a big deal because this film is really going to open up the possibilities. Like I said in my last couple of other videos, is that this could also explain as to why we have Baby Yoda in the Mandalorian TV series. A lot of people believe that there's some kind of cloning thing going on because of the Kaminoan Doctor that we saw in one of the first episodes of the Mandalorian Season 1. And in that episode, you do get the hint that they're trying to clone Baby Yoda. You know, the species of Yoda, essentially. And that could very well explain as to exactly what Palpatine here is doing with this Snoke species called the Midwu. Now, we still don't know the official species of Yoda, but we do know the species of Snoke, which is the Midwu. So basically, M-I-D-W-U. It's a very interesting Star Wars-y name, in my opinion. 
But over in the unknown regions, we're going to learn a lot more secrets about the past, about Palpatine, and everything that there is to be said about Supreme Leader Snoke in, of course, this movie coming out this December. Anyways, guys, drop a comment below. Let me know what you think about all this in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.